Hello, Joy Brooks with Email and Coffee. This discussion really shouldn't be controversial. What is a man? How does he identify himself and relate to others? And now my conversation with Rob Fenstermaker. Greetings, everyone. Joy Brooks with Email and Coffee. Today I'm speaking with Rob Fenstermaker. And Rob has a unique calling in life. And um, why don't you tell us a little bit what, about what you're doing? What what I do, you know, what I love to do is I, I love to, I want to empower men is what I want to do. Because I think there's just a real, um, men are under attack. And, you know, men, the idea of, you know, what it means to be a man in a lot of circles is is almost a dirty word. You something we don't talk about. And this idea of manhood and is, is something that, uh, that men struggle with because we were told that you know we can't be men you know the, the term boys boy boys you know, men can't be men well why can't we be men because men are definitely created different than women and you know uh, and I, what i want to do is it, to empower men to see that yeah we're unique we are unique in who we are embrace the idea of this masculine energy we have Embrace the idea of what it means to be a man and live a life of purpose, live a life of intention, live a life of significance. And that's what I want men to see is that, you know, we're not held captive by an identity that, you know, the world gives us or sometimes we even give ourselves. And, you know, a lot of men I see, we, and I was certainly guilty of it, is we, we create an identity around what I call our nine to five and because it's so common. You meet a man. And the first question is always, asked, what do you do? And that, what do you do? That's your nine to five. And, and so some men, you know, cre- treat it as a status symbol, whatever their nine to five is. And we're so much more than that nine to five. And, you know, when you get sucked up in just creating that identity around that nine to five, and that gets taken away from you. I've been, I've been through three separate corporate downsizings. And when that gets taken away from you, it, it creates a, a struggle with who you are and whose you are. And that's what I want men to see, that we are more than just this nine to five. We're more than just these creatures that have to go out and chase success all the time. And, you know, we all, I mean, I want to be successful. We all want to be successful. But if all you're doing is just pursuing constant success, you realize it's a fruitless chase. Because you start to understand that every time you're about ready to cross that finish line that's been, you know, given to you, you feel you feel like someone moves it. You know, either a, if you're either a new policy comes down or a new sheriff comes in and you got to start all over again. Uh, But what I want to see, what I want to impart upon men is living a life of significance is you taking the opportunity each and every day to be the best version of who you can become and pursue significance first and success follows. They go hand in hand And, and significance. That's you leaving your mark. That's you leaving your legacy. That's you being that unique creation you are. And that's what I want men to see. That's what I want to empower men to live that life. I was listening to a podcast the other day, and the term came up, calling and conscience. Um, Mm -hmm. Not conscious, not conscious, but conscience. Yeah. All right? Like like being conscientious. Right. And... um, the discussion was that that was that is the spirit of almost everything that we have a calling mm-hmm. and we manifest that calling mm-hmm. in our work right and it's its foundation is this moral structure that says this is right, this is wrong, don't do this, do this. This was bad. Don't ever do this again. The con, you yeah. know, the, the conscience that we have that continuously is saying, "Oh, uh, you know, I blame myself for this, or I should have done better, or whatever." So we're we're that's really the um, like the this and this, you know, the way um, we are all looking at the world because after we're kids and we grow up, we're trying to figure out. Who we are, identity. What what's our calling? What do, what do we do, right? And it can't be just defined by a nine to five, like you said. No, no. it's part. It's part, part of, it. of the definition, yeah. 
but it's um it's a temporary definition because it can change and when it changes you know you're not you don't want to think to yourself well uh, you know uh, my whole my whole identity's changed i'm a whole new person it's more like you're continuously growing and you're continuously listening to your calling and you're reaching out to do different things mm-hmm. and you've got this barometer that says well you know don't cross this line cuz that's wrong you don't want to do wrong <laughs> you're not robbing from the poor you know yeah. that's not what you do um so you know both women and men go through this but today everybody is reaching for so so um so, uh, it's it's become such a um forceful identity where it's not something you ease into and you learn about and you develop and you continuously, you know, a, a fluid identity. You have to be something mm-hmm. immediately. And that throws people off because they don't feel it. And therefore they feel something's wrong. Oh, I don't feel yeah. like I'm a man. Therefore, maybe I'm not a man. Excuse me. You need mm-hmm. to learn what that yeah. is. What is what is. And you also have your conscience. Of, of how you grew up, so how you're measuring what's good, what's bad, what you can do, what you can't do. So you've got all these things that you're growing into. It doesn't happen one day you wake up and you've got it all together. No, no. It, it's, a, it's a lifelong learning process. I mean, you, you, you never fully grasp it. And, you know, it, it's one of those fluid situations. And uh, you always have to be, you know, exploring in a in a profound way you know the, that um that that deep space that exists within you um you in, that unique space because we all have that unique space we all have that uh, uniqueness in how we were created no one is created the same and um but the world wants us to be a same it, you know, it goes all the way back to you know public education our education system our education system is, is seriously flawed it's because broken. We, we it's broken because we measure you know six seven eight nine ten year olds against each other it, it, under what standard I, I i don't get it and you know sometimes you know i remember um you know the the, the kids that are maybe not focused or not maybe not paying attention you know the the, the they're kind of thought to be rabble rouse or maybe they're not paying attention because they're not being challenged. I know my daughter was that way. We'd always get reports from the school that she's not paying attention, Um, but but she just wasn't being challenged in school. And once we kind of got elevated in, you know, different classes, yeah, she was getting challenged and she was paying attention. Um, But this whole why you know I've I've always struggled with you know when we the, like the standardized testing we have these standardized testing oh, what are you testing well, why are we trying to make all these kids identical because it carries on into their adulthood you know there's these same kids that we regiment and you know say you got to do this they get into adulthood and they they have no identity they don't know who they are they struggle that's why you see so many of these young people going to college and getting these worthless educations because everybody says you got to go to college. Well, college is not for everybody. It always drove me nuts. So, you know, the, the the school district that, you know, my wife and I sent our children to, it was a fantastic school district. It was rated always in the top 1% of school districts in the country. And it always frustrated me when we go to the parent-teacher night and they would sit there and talk about, well, we're getting this number of kids into colleges. I'm thinking, okay. Well, college is not for everybody. Yeah, I mean, we still need plumbers. We still need auto mechanics, welders, these, you know, the, these trades to make this whole thing work. And, you know, we kind of discount that. Maybe a kid is not gifted in that he wants to go to college, but he wants to be whatever. And I think you're seeing a kind of change in that. Um, but when we just kind of regiment that this is what the standard of excellence is that you have to get these grades and you have to be at this college. We're putting so much pressure on 16 and 17 year olds because you got to get into the right school because that's what success means. You've got to be in the right school. And these kids, I mean, I, I couldn't have done it when I, I, I saw it for my kids. Some of these kids were put under so much incredible pressure. It's 16 and 17 years old. And we wonder why, they're so screwed up when they get into their 20s. 
We wonder why, you know, they, they've lost this identity of who, we, who they are. When we wonder why, you know, young boys are getting so confused of what the idea of what it means to be a man. I mean, I think one, there's an attack on man, on, on the idea of man. I also think there's a, an attack on the nuclear family in that fathers are just kind of cast aside. And, you know, a father in, in many circles is not considered important. It's not considered necessary. But I've done a lot of work for, I did work with youth for, you know, 15 years and 12, 13, 14 year olds. And I could always tell especially the boys, I could tell the boys that had no man in their life, that had no father figure in the home. I could tell them within five minutes. It was, it was painfully obvious because they were screaming out. They just wanted that connection. They wanted that male connection. And, you know, God loved the single moms. They were doing the best they could, but they're not the dad. They're not the father. And, you know, I, I blame some fathers in that they just, you know, kind of abdicated the role of what it means to be a father. Um, but, you know, um, girls we, we need to, to, yeah, girls we, we need to raise, we, we need to raise boys to understand what it means to be a man. Mm -hmm. They need to understand what it means. As simple as that. Just to be able to, um, um, learn their boundaries, to continue to learn their boundaries, to know how far they um, can go, should go, you know, th yeah. there, there's an unspoken um, law um, for both sexes. And when I say law, it's not that um, there's right and wrong and there are things of that nature, but there, there's, there's a, um, a general flow Mm -hmm. Um, and I mean, when a woman decides that she wants to, um, get a full-time job and mm -hmm. go to work and accomplish something now, mm -hmm. she's, now she's just doing what men did. And we've, yeah. we've just proven that it doesn't work for men. Yeah. So why <laughs> would it work for women? <laughs> yeah. You know, I've, I've so had some of these conversations. I've had some of these conversations. I, I mean, I host two two events myself. One is a Friday afternoon event. Uh, I just call the virtual Friday whiskey hour. Another one I call Iron Sharpens Iron. And for the most part, it's men that show up, and we have these conversations. But I always love it when the women show up, and they give their perspective. And you know, I mean, I would I would call my wife a feminist, but not in the you know the toxic feminism that we see in this day and age. She's a feminist in the sense that. She, she understands what it means to be a powerful woman. She also understands what it means to be a powerful man. And she's get, you know, she has the clear expectations of me as the husband and the father of what my roles are. And I, you know, I understand what her roles are. And, and that's sort of um, what I mean by rules. That's sort yeah. of what I mean by rules. Yeah. And that everybody, there's a, there's a certain amount of expectation. You cannot have a relationship. You cannot have even a friendship if there are no rules. And those right. rules are not, you don't say, hi, my name is Joy. Oh, Rob, very nice to meet you. Let's talk about the rules. We have in, our ba in the back of our heads, we know things that are not accepted. So, you know, I, I, you, know you wouldn't grab me and give me a big kiss if you just met me, right? And, you know, I wouldn't, uh, you know, I don't know, in, invite you for over, over for dinner, um, the, yeah. you know, the very, the very first time I see you because it might make you uncomfortable. There's, there are some things you just don't do when you first meet people. Those are, those are, those are society. I don't want to use the term norms. It's going to freak people out. But these are, yeah. these are expectations, mm -hmm. very broad expectations mm -hmm. that frame relationships all types of relationships yeah. and like you said you have an understanding with your wife the things that you do they're mm -hmm. not necessarily i do man things and you do woman things right. you do laundry right I, I do the laundry i do the laundry in the house i love doing the laundry and i love doing the right. grocery so, shopping and those are okay, considered so women tap, but i but i love doing those two things i i'm just you know that's what you like and that, when I was single, and, uh, when I was single and on my own, I figured those things out, and I just kind of enjoyed them. So right. And um, when you meet someone, 
whatever the friendship is, you begin to explore those those uh, boundaries. You begin to understand, and that's how you form relationships, and that's how they click, right? Because if you said to your wife, I'm going to be doing the laundry and I'm going to be doing the grocery shopping. And if she said, no, no, I'm going to be doing that, then you have a problem. Yeah. Right. Um, I wouldn't have a problem with that. Well, I, I think I would. I like to do grocery shopping, but that's neither here nor there. Um, I'm merely saying that though, these are the types of things uh, that people do. Now you and I were people. Hmm. Isn't that amazing? We're people. Yeah. Where I'm, I'm a woman, you're a man, and there are slight differences. And understanding those slight differences helps us begin a friendship. If we don't know anything and we are, are um, throwing everything away to start off with by saying, my identity is this, and I'm explaining to you my identity, and you're telling me, well, my identity is this, it's not the same thing. Because I'm going to learn who you are by being with you, just talking with you. I'm going to learn. That's called trust. What you tell me and what I learn are going to be two different things. Yeah. And people need to be able to feel comfortable in their actions. And this is where it falls apart because people are so willing to take identities and they're saying they feel this way however that may or may not be the way it plays out yeah which makes people anxious which make i mean it just this is this is not unusual this is really the way it's always been except yeah. we haven't really forced identities down anybody's throat we've simply said hi i'm joy and i like to yeah. play baseball that's it yeah. Oh, you yeah. like baseball? Come on, let's play. That yeah. was the beginning of relationship. Yeah. And, you know, there, I think a lot of people want this, you know, equal relationship. 50, there's no such thing as an equal relationship. There, there's no such thing. Somebody's always going to have more power over the relationship than the other. But not, you know, different parts of that relationship. Someone's going to be have more power. You know, my, my wife and I. There's parts of the relationship where I have more power over the relationship. There's parts of the relationship where she has more power. You know, when it comes to nurturing the kids, you know, she's a lot better at it than I am. I've had to learn how to, what I call, call exercise my empathy muscle. You know, it's just that's something that didn't necessarily come natural for me. But, you know, having a daughter and a wife, I had to, you know, figure that out. But I followed her lead. There's things that I'm more strong at that she has followed my lead and just being, you know, not a disciplinary. Not that, not that I'm strict with my children, but I, you know, I draw the line. I was like, this is what it's going to be. And she's, you know, that's maybe not necessarily in her wheelhouse, but she allows me to do that. Um, and she's taken lessons from, you know, she, un she takes my lead from that as well. Um, so, I mean, you, it's, it's, it's a give and take. We, we, we play off each other. I mean, we're coming up on 33 years of marriage. We, you know, I think we've done pretty well, you know, as far as, you know, raising children, you know, one of the things that I, I think we've done very well in is that we weren't our children's buddies. We raised our children in a way to be quality young adults. And I have a 31-year-old and 27-year-old, and I think we've done pretty well at that. Are they perfect? Absolutely not, because I'm not perfect. My wife's not perfect. Do they have their challenges? 100%. But they're able to get them figured out. I, you know, I, I would, one thing I kind of always, you know, felt that um, I prided myself on is that, yeah, my, my children knew I could be tough, but if they messed up we just had a conversation what did you learn they tell me is it going to happen again no okay if it happened again the conversation was much different but i gave them the opportunity to explain it to me as, as to what you know what was going through their mind when they did this and well, why did this happen and we just it was just a, a, a conversation and you know they understood i was in charge of the conversation but i also gave them the opportunity to, to let me know why they did this and that to me was me empowering them to be quality people, to be able to communicate what was going through their thought process. This idea of mm -hmm. critical thought, you know, critical thought is something that, you know, kind of on life support in this, in this world right now. Um, and we need to embrace that. And, you know, teaching my children that ability to think things through, I think is going to serve them well later in life.
Yeah, because there's a lot there's a lot going on. There's um conflict management. Yeah. Which tends to be no tolerance and as soon as you're uncomfortable, you you're like, "Oh, I feel triggered." And yeah. you you can't go there now. And that's not no going to take you anywhere in life you no. need i mean you're going to just become more and more anxious if that yeah. is what you're claiming you need to be able to um learn how to control yourself in 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 an uncontrollable situation which there are many mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> you know get on a bus yeah. and you're in you're in an environment where anything can happen and you you know you, you need to be able to control yourself or else yeah. Strange thing. You Strange said you said, anxi you said anxiety there, and you know, it was just, it's been described to me that depression results from, from hanging on to the past, and anxiety happens from worrying about the future. And you know, it, we, we, the past is over. We can't do anything about the past. Can't change it. It's over. We can learn from it, and you you got to learn lessons from the past, and you can't identify with any failings in the past. And so I say, why worry about tomorrow? Because you know what. There's no guarantee you're even going to get it tomorrow. We're not guaranteed it tomorrow. What we are guaranteed is today. And this thing we have that we call today, that's where all your opportunity in, in life to be that version of who you want to be exists. And too many people miss that because they're either hanging on to the past and they create an identity around the past or they're worrying about tomorrow and they don't live in, the, they don't live in today. And I think that's the biggest stumbling block, what I see of most people. Yeah, because the building blocks are right here, right now. So yeah. if you're saying, I want to um, aspire to be something in five years, yeah. you're building it today. So exactly. you know what you want. Okay, you see it and you're planning for it. But everything, you know, you're very intentional. Sometimes I hate to use that word, but it is what it is. You're very intentional about what you're doing right yeah. now. Yeah. So you don't burn a bridge that you may need right. to go you know, go to tomorrow, you um, yeah. are responsible. So if there is a situation that is um, falling apart, you take responsibility for it and you deal with it. Mm -hmm. um, and you're also taking responsibility for your actions. And you're learning that I need to act in this situation. I don't need to act in that situation. I need yeah. to act with, a, you know, a level of one to 10. What is the number that I need to act yeah. in? And the only way to do that huh, is to feel a little uncomfortable sometimes. Oh, and yeah. you need to be able to, uh, it's an odd thing. You need to be able to feel comfortable in that. I don't know what exactly what I'm doing right now, but I know yeah. when, when to pull out. I know when it's not right. That's that conscious conscience thing going on. Like this doesn't feel right. This is bad. Yeah. I'm pulling out. This is not where yeah. I want to be. Or this is okay. I can, you know, it's okay. It's within my wheelhouse. I'm, I, I'm feeling okay in the situation. Yeah, yeah. And, I, I don't think know. we were. I don't think we were created to just be in comfort all the time because you, you be in comfort all the time. That leads to complacency, and complacency leads to just a life that you're just, you know sitting on the couch all day and you're not doing anything. You're not doing anything with your life. You know, I, I in, in my time in corporate, I, I saw so many people that, you know, all they would do all day is check their 401k value. Cause I got to get this to a certain point where I can just walk away and go chase a white ball all day. And I'm thinking, Oh, come on. You got, there's gotta be more to life than that. Yeah, there's gotta be more yeah. in life to that. And you, you gotta have more of a plan uh, of what you want to do with your life. Um, and, you know, I, I've seen a lot, you see this a lot of times, especially in the people that are the alpha types, they're, they're so wrapped around an identity that they've created that any, anything we have that is, you know, a vocation is going to end at some point, they're not going to be forever. And then they step away from it and they're dead within a few, you know, they're dead soon because they've, they've become so they go, entrenched oh, they in have, that they don't, they don't know yeah. what to do they don't know what to do with their life at that point and they just yeah well like i said i was beginning to say they go home and yeah what do they do at home because they need to yeah. be able to understand okay so who is you know at home joy who's work joy yeah, yeah. who's friend joy all these all these things you need to share different pieces of your life mm -hmm. Um, 
you need to make good friends. Yeah. Yeah. You and, need to live life you know, in a holistic way. You know, don't be one person at home, be another person at work and be another person uh, in your social settings. You, 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 you got to live it in a holistic way. You, you got to be authentic. Um, and I always hear the people, I can compartmentalize my life. Well, okay. What? <laughs> I don't think that works out well because eventually yeah, you're going to get exposed in some way, some fashion. If you're, if you're living these separate lives. It's, um, it's a tool, but it's, it's not, it's not the best tool. It's no. not, a, it's a survival tool, tool, but it's not a, um, um, like a, a, a relationship tool. You can't it doesn't do lead to It doesn't lead to contentment. It doesn't lead to living a, a fulfilling life. It doesn't lead to uh, living a, a life that makes a difference. It doesn't lead to living a life that, um, takes you to that next level because you're just, you're, you're just, you, you put you're everything fragmented. in a box. You yeah, put everything in a box. You, you, yeah, you, you've walled yourself off from opportunity. Yeah. Do um in your men's group um are there some is there like some exercise that you tell them and I mean mental, physical, whatever it is, some exercise that or they've told you something that um is pretty common for men to do in situations of uh, I'm going to use the term extremity where, you know, they're like, I mm -hmm. I'm going to lose it in one way or the other. <laughs> yeah. You know, one of the most powerful things for me, and I, I know a lot of men, we, we, we go on retreats and we go out in the wilderness. Just you get out and just, you know, get away from whatever. Go out in the woods and just go on a hike, do those kind of things, um, whatever it may be. Um, and I, it, to me, there's there's so much power in nature. And um, I, I've spent a lot of time with men in nature and we, we have some great profound talks when you can just get away and just be mindful of where you're at. I think this whole, you know, practice of mindfulness is something that's very powerful. I've embraced the idea of mindfulness and, you know, it's not woo woo stuff. It's just being in tune with, you know, who you are and where you're at. So if you're in somewhere, you don't need to be in nature, but just be mindful of your surroundings. If you're out for a walk. Just be mindful of, you know, what's going on, you know, be mindful of the birds, be mindful of the, what you smell, just be mindful of that. And it, it, it's something that kind of can take that uh, pressure that, you know, so I know a lot of men feel just kind of take that off. Um, and I know it's it, uh, the idea of mindfulness has helped me immensely. Uh, once I really embrace the power of it, um, I saw a difference in how I, uh, dealt with my work life, how I dealt with my relationships, how I dealt with uh, my family, my children, uh, because you, you start to understand that, you know, it, you can't take life so seriously all the time. And that's one struggle that I see a lot of men do is we feel we have to take life so seriously all the time. And I, I used to be that, that man where everything was so serious and <clears throat> I was kind of in that point where I, I wasn't enjoying, you know, what I was doing. I wasn't enjoying life. Um, and you know, sometimes you gotta have fun just, you know, sometimes, you know, I, I can, I, I can do silly stuff with the best of them. And, you know, I, I can also be very serious when I need to be. Um, but you, you know, there's a time and place for everything and you, you got to understand that. And you, you know, you, you've got to be willing to, um, be authentic to who you are. If you want to laugh, laugh. If you want to cry, cry. That's another thing that, you know, men are told, you know, men don't cry. Like, well, isn't crying an emotion? And aren't we emotional beings? Why would we not cry? And, you know, I, I, I've, I've asked men, when was the last time you actually cried? I'll ask, I'll ask that every now. When was the last time you actually cried? You know, it, we, we, we don't think anything when, okay, like Sunday's the Super Bowl. We don't think anything when our team wins the Super Bowl and we see men crying over that. But if we see men getting emotional because of whatever, something that's in their past, we kind of think, oh, what's up, what's up with this guy? And, and what type of um, what type of emotions or what is have you in, in your opinion? 
emotions. What about emotions are different between, generally different between men and women? Well, I think women, you know, display their emotions a, a lot easier than what men do. Um, you know, because, you know, men are, you know, told from a young age, you know, suck it up and, you know, rub a little mud on it. You'll be all right. Um, and we're, we're told to tamp down those emotions. And, you know, I mean, men are the ones we send to war. Men are the ones we send to do the to do the dirty work. And so they're, they're expected not to. Um, to be, you know, but, to show. But you know, if a man, that, do you think that if a man was told, he, he, go ahead and let it out? Yeah. Do you think that we that women and men would think the same way? I think a lot of people. Um, I, I think that, that, that we're changing a little bit, but you know, if we go back, you know, several years, if we saw a man, you know, uh, crying over something, we would think, hey, what's there's something wrong with this guy? Um, I, I but. I think, you know, one thing that to me that has kind of changed a lot of you know, how we we view that, view emotions, is just, you know, we went through all these you know, ridiculous lockdowns here, what, two or three years ago. And, you know, I, I saw a lot of men struggling mentally with their mental health because of that, uh, because, you know, we lost that ability to connect. We lost that ability to have those conversations with other men and you know some of the deepest conversations i have had have been with other men where we can share life and just have fun but you know we can we can share life you know we, we talk more than you know just you know the we think that guys all they do is sit around and talk about sports and sex well no we don't we talk about other things we talk about some you know some of the hard things that uh, you know, of life, you know, our relationships and, you know, um, you know, the things we struggle with in, in, in our professional life, the things we struggle with in our marriages and, and, and being a father. And, you know, some of those, those are some of the best conversations I have, I've ever had with other men, not talking about, you know, what the result of Sunday's football games, but talking about life and how it's impacted us. Those are some of the most meaningful conversations I've ever had that have changed me and have changed other men. Um, I heard the other day that they say they did a study where the, a judge, depending on when he ate, would um, declare either lenient or, or very strict Okay. Um, at court. And um, that's biological. I mean, that means that his sugar is riding one way or the other. Yeah. So there's a, there's no doubt that the testosterone in your body and the estrogen in my body are mm -hmm. doing different things. Right. So um, if, you know, unless I grew up with a bunch of boys around me, yeah. All the time. If I grew up, you know, with five brothers and five brothers and they always took care of me and I went with them where, wherever, unless that's happening, the odds are that I'm going to react differently to seeing somebody get punched in the face than you. Yeah. Would. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. I might cry. Yeah. I might get upset. I might go. Oh! <laughs> and you might run in there and try to stop the fight. Yeah. And that's, you know, that's part of being a man. We, we have this, you know, propensity. I don't know if the word violence is right, but we have this propensity to be I mean, aggressive. We have this propensity to be aggressive. Well, I think that's the testosterone. Idea, I think that's, it's that's the testosterone, testosterone. 100%. And, it, you know, it, you know, um, it, it just, it, it, it drives me. Women have too, but not the same yeah. level. No, they don't have the same level. And so, you know, it, it just drives me nuts when I see these men that say, well, I'm now a woman. And I, I don't know, understand why women are not more offended by that, because one, they're not a woman. And it, it, the reverse, the reverse, when I see these women say, now I'm a man. OK, are you really a man if we go back to the draft because we're going to go back to the draft and you get drafted and go to war? Are you still a man? You just tell me that because I don't think you are. I don't think you're going to get drafted. And if you did get drafted, I'll bet you suddenly you're a woman. And, you know, it's just. The the insanity of that whole debate is something I just I do not understand. 
And, you know, I, whatever. You want to live your life, live your life. I don't care. You do you. Right. Don't right. tell me I have to understand it because I don't understand it. And you're yeah. never going to tell me otherwise. Yeah. I mean, the point is, is that in most cases, um, you're not going to understand the way other people feel. And it's not necessarily yeah. even required yeah. that you do. What the requirement is, is that I'm going to get back to it, that those basic rules of society where we're civil with each other. Yeah. So I meet you and you're different. What you've got blue hair and tattoos mm -hmm. and earrings. And I'm not exactly sure, you know, <laughs> if, you know, what, what, you know, are you Mike or are you Michelle? I'm not sure you call <laughs> yourself Mike. I don't know what that means. So, and then I think to myself, what does it matter? How you doing, yeah. Mike? Then I'm going to find out about you. That's okay. There's nothing. I don't, I don't see yeah. any issues with that. And I don't see the point in having to say, hi, I'm Mike, that's she, her, or, or they, them. I yeah. don't understand that. I really don't understand it. That's, that's not identity. That's, um, it's insanity. It's not identity. It's insanity. It's somewhat insanity. I, I'm uncomfortable because it, it makes the rules you're already imposing something on me. There's already yeah. power struggle there where I just yeah. say to you, if we all know there's basic rules out there that, oh, you know what? She, she appears to be a woman. I have short hair. People may go, H, what, what is she? Right. Yeah. She appears to be a woman. I'll just be nice to her. Yeah. Right. And we'll figure it out. We'll be civil with each other and we'll figure it yeah. out. Um, yeah. I could be the most feminine thing in the world and you could be treating me nicely and you could say, she's just not my cup of tea. There's nothing yeah. wrong with that. Nope. And I could I be think. very masculine and you could say, wow, she, she needs to be our shortstop. <laughs> At the end. And, you know, and, and, and it may, she, he, whatever. I'm just, I, I'm just afraid that once you begin to play with identity, I don't yeah. want to use the term politics, but you begin to play with identities that yeah. you're taking the language mm -hmm. and you're turning it into Babel as yeah. in the story of the tower of Babel, go read it in the Bible. They told yeah. the story for a reason. And that is what will happen. If you break yeah. down, the language, um, simply because something told you that it's uncomfortable and your yeah. identity is telling you that you're uncomfortable with it. Um, if that's, you're, 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 uh, you're essentially creating your own reality and that's eventually going to bite you. It's not mm -hmm. going to work out because you're, you're only going to be able to be with people who agree with you yeah and the world does not all agree with you sometimes people that you need and love may say i love you darling but i don't agree with you here yeah yeah exactly yeah we, we yeah we want to live in these silos now we want to live in these silos where everybody believes what we believe and that that doesn't that doesn't yeah. work out well for society it doesn't work out well at all it should be um, truth or lie and not we and them. Yes. It's like, are, are you telling me the truth? That's, that's all I need. Just, you know, basically, mm -hmm. I don't need you to tell me everything about you. Just be true. Yeah. Right? As true as you can be. And um, let me decide, <laughs> yeah. you know, whether, you know, I, 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 you're, my, you're my tribe or not my tribe. But there's no we in them. No. Or, I, you know, let's put it this way. Obviously, there's we and them, right? You know, if I'm talking about my family and then I'm talking about your family, then it would be we and them. But I'm nearly yeah. saying, though, they shouldn't be, um, they shouldn't be opposing factors. It shouldn't be, um, well, you either, you know, believe my in my identity or you, you know, you're wrong. Right. And, and that's, 
that 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 yeah, you know, and I I, I think there's there's something I think our names names are sacred. And um, I, I think our, our names are absolutely sacred. And I believe that, you know, there's, you know I'm, I'm a person of faith and there's a lot of promises in the Bible. One of those promises is that, you know, at some point we're going to be given a white stone. And on that white stone is going to be engraved the name that was given to us at the time of our creation. And I think I absolutely believe that name that will be given to us is, you know, who we are to be in this world, whatever it may be that unique way we were created. And, but, you know, the world wants us to be bricks. The world rejects stones. Um, you know, give you an example from the Bible. When the nation of Israel was held captive by the Egyptians in, in, the, in the book of Exodus, they were there for one purpose, and that was to build bricks. And what's a brick? A brick is something that is identical. Every brick had to be the exact same. Couldn't deviate from that what that was. That's what the world wants. They want us to be the same. They don't want deviation from, from who we are. But what's the first thing they did once they finally were able to get out of, of their enslavement? They went and built an altar of stones. Why stones? Because no stone is like the other stone. And that represented their uniqueness, which kind of goes to that white stone that has been especially prepared for each of us, which has that name of who we are and whose we are engraved on it. And, you know, we can discover what that name is in this life, but you have to be intentional. You have to be willing to really explore deeply, um, you know, those those things that are in your life, those those uh, those things that are burning inside of you, those passions you have. And there's a reason those things keep coming up time and time again, because you're probably not living that life that you were intended to live. That's why there's so much dissatisfaction in, in, in corporate corporate America, because people were not meant to live that life they were meant to live a different life and they know it they just don't know what to do with it yeah it, um historically right um people were journeymen it's kind of funny that was the term right they were journeymen they yeah. were learning a trade right and they um you know they they, they were tailors they were, um, you know, the yeah. last carters, weavers. They were the last yeah. names. Okay. And, well, uh, my name, my name, it's German for window maker. There you go. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, um, and the boys took on the family profession and the girls, yeah. you know, married off and that's the way it was. And I'm not saying right. I'm not saying wrong. I'm saying mm -hmm. um, that that led to our survival. And as we built civilizations, we became more specialized. And yeah. um, from the during the Industrial Revolution, when we made machines that that took some of those jobs away from people, mm -hmm. uh, a car replaced a horse. So what was the last time you met a blacksmith? <laughs> Yeah. Right. So a lot of jobs were just replaced or there are still yeah. blacksmiths and these mm -hmm. people just do, you know, they do things a little differently. Usually it's a machine that makes all the iron. So it's, you know, and and these things have been um, sourced so that you take a look at any piece of iron and it's probably stamped India. Yeah. Right. Take a look. Take a look. Uh, go outside. Take a walk around your neighborhood and take a look at the. Um, oh, now the word escapes me. The big uh, things in the in the street. The sewer lids. L right. Yeah. All those things. Sewer They're covers. Stamped. Sewer covers. Yeah. Right. Yeah. They're stamped. India. Them? Yeah. All right. Yeah. So a lot of a lot of the 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 old the, the old uh, traditional jobs, as they should be. You know, we're a civilization. We're growing. They've been replaced. We're not hunter gatherers anymore. We're not, you know, we're no. not the, all the things that we used to be. So we keep marching forward. But during this corporate era, um, it turned out that we created third worlds to manage making all the things that we don't make anymore because we're all, you know, we're all MBAs now. Yeah, we're you know we're making services and documents and and you know we don't make anything we don't make products we just 
make all the rules around that stuff. We, you know, assign it yeah. to someone else. We make companies and, and, and then outsource it to someone else and someone else makes the stuff. And they're the ones, they're the journeymen. So all of these yeah. things, this is really odd. And now we're coming out of that third world because the third world is rising up and they're doing the same thing that we did saying, we're sending our kids to school. They're going to learn yeah. how to be MBAs. They're, so what's happening here? You know, this is part of the evolution of man and, and you man that's impacting men, women, the sexes, relationships, the whole thing. And we don't, you know, talk about mindfulness. We don't sit down and say, what's going on with nature nurture? What's, what's going on here? Like, you know, mm -hmm. the things that our parents thought they were, you know, go to school. Me, I was, you know, my, my, my mom and dad wanted me to go to school because they hoped I would find a doctor to get married. That's why they wanted me to go to school. There's no doubt about that. Um, but our kids, you know, our kids and their kids and their kids, what? What, what is it that they're aspiring to? And there's a problem there. There's a problem there. And that makes people anxious because if they go to school to get an MBA or whatever it is that they think they're getting, are they going to become an engineer? Are they going to become a programmer? Are they are they going to be take, getting you know jobs that actually um, translate into specific work, or is it just like this nebulous? I'm a I'm a an accountant. Like, what are you going to do with that? Like, are you going to be go to finance? Or you you know what are you going to do with that? Right? Yeah. And what, ha you know, all of these, all of these sort of, I mean, you're a doctor, a nurse, you know, a lawyer, these are, these are specific professions. I'm not saying people don't come out and become accountants and go into finance, but I, I'm, I'm saying sometimes it's, too, you know, like I come out, I'm going to be, I, I studied English, I'm, I'm, you know, literature. What, what are you going to do? Read books for the rest of your life? Are you going to become a librarian? Are you going to be a teacher? Are you a yeah. poet? What are you going to do with that degree? Yeah. Now, a lot of people say that that liberal arts degree is most important because it does teach kids mm -hmm. everything. So yeah. I, I, I'm i not sure where I heard this, but someone also said recently that when they went to school or when they, some school they are going to, they have to have science, math. You know, they're forced to have English, science, math, these basic classes that they have to have. Mm -hmm. um, and, and you know, I, I'm, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if we need to be specialized more or if we need to be um, taught broader. I don't yeah. know. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I got, I, 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 re I received a liberal arts degree. I mean, I got a, a bachelor of the arts and so I had all... <laughs> You know, I had all those broad things. My wife, she got more, she got a bachelor of science. She, she went a specific route with her degree. And, you know, I, I you know, I, it, it served us well. Um, but, you know, I mean, it's, it, and, you know, a lot of people will get that specific degree, that science degree and not pursue a career in that, but she did. I mean, she got your you know, bachelor of science and, and marketing and finance. And that's, you know, the, the career path she chose and, you know, good for her. But I've also seen a lot of people, they get that, you know, specific degree and they don't pursue anything with regards to that They because they get out and they got that accounting degree because my dad was an accountant and his dad was an accountant. So I'm going to be an accountant, but they don't want to be an accountant or whatever. They got a law degree because my dad was well, a lawyer and his dad it. was they a lawyer were, they, and they don't want to practice law. So, it was, yeah. Right. But, but, you know, they they have an affinity toward those skills but they're not necessarily taught the broader reach of those skills. So I'm a lawyer, but might I be, you know, a politician or might I be, yeah. uh, you know, a, um, a minister or might mm -hmm. I, because, you know, the fact that you know the law that you're able to 
speak and stand up in front of people and 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 hear people's cases and make judgments and all those things there may there may be any broad amount of things that you could do with that yeah i i i just i would that's where i think education has failed because i don't think um kids are um made to understand that there there's transfer that, that some of these skills are wildly transferable and to think about mm -hmm. what they can do what they like to do and yeah. how they can apply that so all the kids that go to school and get um degrees i'm sorry scholarships um sports scholarships and yeah. they, they they think oh i'm going to you know i'm going to become a you know a professional soccer player right which is wonderful all right what are you going to do when you're too old to play soccer right so yeah. what are those skills that you adore so much the ones that are going to make you play soccer and that you are good god bless and that you go professional god bless but what happens when you have that accident or you're just cut out whatever what happens what do you do and they're not taught what to do they still have those skills those skills are viable skills they're not taught what to do with them and so they yeah. miss out are they a coach are they a gym teacher are they um you know a leader because you don't play sports without being able to either lead or follow right. um in a committed way i mean you, there's nothing in sports that doesn't teach you to be a leader or when I say a follower, I mean a disciplined follower. Mm -hmm. Right. So, and, yeah. and I don't think, I don't think they realize this, which happens a lot in sports and to men, especially, I mean, think of all the, yeah. the guys that, that are ex basketball, baseball, you know, they're, they, they end up, um, some are very successful businessmen. And some end up alcoholics, drug addicts, because they don't yeah. know what to do with themselves. They don't know what to do. You're right. Their identity was well, that football player, but they don't realize it's still yeah. the skills. The football helmet's gone. Yeah. They still have those skills. Yeah. Don't wrap your identity in things that are going to pass. So any, you know, yeah, don't, don't wrap your identity in that because, you know, our identity it's is important. so much more than that. And, you know. Again, just know who you are and know what it is you want to do with your life. And I think that's when you start digging deep into that, you start to, you know, embrace this identity of, of what it is you want to accomplish and you start being intentional. And, you know. Yeah, I think that things will happen. I think, you know, if if you're aware, if you're mindful and intentional and you're in the moment, you get, you're able to build a plan that says, OK, you know, <laughs> here's, you know, here are the building blocks. I'm going to move yeah. forward with this, you know, with this in mind and I'll know when to, you know, when there's a fork in the road and I'll be yeah. able to take the right route. Or if I take the wrong route, I'll eventually learn it's the wrong route and be able to fix, you know, to write that. And these are all there. These skills are not, you know, man versus woman. These are just, um, yeah, these are human skills. That Human no one, it's, yeah. They're not. They're not yeah. taught in school. They're not necessarily no. taught in school, and no. um, there is a um, there is you know there's a flavor that it's a man, a flavor that's a woman. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's just like it's slightly different. It's sort of like, for example, my husband. If I were to say to him many years ago, um, orange, in his mind, there was no orange. It was red. Okay. Right. right? And yeah. that's, it's, it wasn't that he couldn't see the color. He knew the color. Cause if I said, you know, what's, you know, pick out the different colors here, he would be able to see those. He would know this does yeah. not go with this, but he would call it red. He would be like this yeah. light red shirt. Okay. It's orange. All right, whatever he'd say, because slightly different flavor. Uh, is that a manly thing? I don't know, but it's something that he did. And I know for a fact, yeah. women know colors very well, very well.
you know, I mean, and, and is it because we pick nail polish? I don't know. We put makeup on? Yes. I'm sure, I'm sure a man who wears makeup knows colors. Or a painter, a man who paints, knows colors. But my mm. husband was a fabricator. So it was red, it was black, it was <laughs> white, it was blue, it was green. Mm. I don't think there was, oh, they were, it was brown. But I don't think there was maroon. I don't think, you know, I don't think there was any, he'd be like, maroon? What, what is that? That's somewhere between red and brown, honey. Mm, no. So, you know, um, and I, I think it's okay to embrace those differences. I don't think it's necessary to say um, that only men think this way and only women think this way. I think there are plenty of instances where we are equal and there are plenty of instances where we're not. Yeah. And I think that's okay. Yeah. And that's also person by person. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so, celebrate our uniqueness. We need to right. celebrate our uniqueness. Don't celebrate it in a way that I'm a part of, you know, it, 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 we all want to be parts of a group, but we, we kind of go more to the focus of, of celebrating the group identity, celebrate the individual identity. Right. And, um, you know, celebrate what it means to be a man, celebrate what it means to be a woman. And I, I think when we get it, kind of get into that space, that's where we start understanding, you know, who we are in this world right. and why we were given this life. We're all given this life for a reason and a purpose. Right. And when you know who you are, you start to understand that reason. You know, the, the two, the saying is the two greatest days of your life are the day you were born and the day you figure out why. And that why yeah. is, you know, what that purpose of your life is that, that why is that name that's etched on that white stone for you? That why is you living your life to the fullest? You know, I, I, I think that, um, when people become comfortable in their body, yeah, um, and people become comfortable in their mind, and they accept themselves, mm -hmm. other people, again, that's that's a truth that other people recognize. And yeah. in many instances, if you're true, people will respect you for that. Not everybody, yeah. but the people that you can create relationships with will recognize your truth without you um, telling them. Mm -hmm. They'll, 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 you know, they'll accept your truth, and that's that. And um, It's just, it's diff It's not easy. It's not easy. Yeah. That's why, you know, it's good to be, uh, it's good to have a community, a group where you could talk and it's safe. Um, it's good to have, a, you know, friends that don't just say yes to you, but do accept you. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. They might. You know, they accept you. They say, you know, you know, you did this wrong, but I love you. Don't do this again, but I love you. You know, I wouldn't yeah. do that if I were you, but I love you. I'm going to be here tomorrow. If you do it, I'll yeah. be here tomorrow. But, you know, yeah. you know, that type of a thing. Um, and it, it it's much more than tolerance because it's we take responsibility for who we are first. And then we begin to um, build relationships based upon that, because we're yeah. just not alone. No, we're just not alone. Those relationships are very important. They are. They help define yeah. us. They define okay. us. They, they help define us. Yes. They help define us. So, uh, where can people find you on the web? Well, I, I have a website. It's just robfenstermaker.com. That's R-O-B-F-E-N-S-T-E-R-M-A-K-E-R.com. I'm all over social media, LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, under the same name. Uh, you can look me up there. Um, yeah, you just reach out to me. Um, I'm always open to have a conversation. Uh, I, you know, I always want to have a conversation with people and just kind of 
see where they're at in life and just learn a little bit more about, you know, the dreams, the visions they have and how I can empower them to take that next step. Or what I call them perfect action, you know, quit waiting for the perfect time to take action. Just act because there's no such, there's no such time as perfect act. There's no such time as a perfect time. If you and begin if, to if you trust define, yourself. And, and I tell you what, yeah, you got to trust yourself. And even if you were to define what that perfect time is, if that perfect time were to arrive for you, you would still negotiate your way out of it. So just, you got to act. If you've got something you want to do, just act on it. That's the best advice I can give. Just act. Quit thinking and just act. Right. That's the I greatest mean, lesson yourself, we can learn. 75% of me is pretty sure this is the right thing. So let's go for yeah. 80, 85, 90. Go for it. Let's go for 100. Just go for it. Just do it. it. Just do it. Just do it. Just do it and learn. Yeah. And exactly. And if you, you fail, you know, if you fail, so what? You learn more about yourself in times of failure anyways than you do in times of success. And hopefully you've got uh, some solid people around you. Yes. yes. Family's important. You Family's know. important. important. Friends are important. And you're important, too. We're all important. Yeah. And, you know, um, yeah. And sometimes we and as men, I've heard this said, sometimes we as men, we just need to learn how to love ourselves. And sometimes we, we as men can, uh, individually, we can be the hardest person to love. We just need to learn how to love ourselves. Yeah. I, well, you know, I'd say that um, for men that have been taught action, you know, and uh, they're all, you know, you're, you're always acting something out and you're never right. taking the time to measure that action for yeah. yourself to say, you know, I mean, you know, is this right for me? Is this wrong for me? You know, whatever it is, you're just acting. You're constantly, you're constantly acting. Cause I yeah. mean, there was a point in time where that was, you know, necessary, you know, the, the old yeah. hunter gatherer kind of thing where men went out to hunt and women gathered and, you know, took care of the kids and men were acting constantly acting. If they didn't bring back food, they, you know, they had roots and berries. So they were out there getting the protein and they needed to act. If they acted wrong, they got, you know, a horn in the belly or, you know, they, yeah, right. They fell off a cliff. So men are constantly acting. However, it, it's okay for men to reflect on those actions. Yes. It's okay. It I is. think that's where the toxic nonsense comes into play here where men need to be given the time to reflect mm -hmm. not taken away not anything taken away from them not that yeah. that they're bad <laughs> they just need time to reflect and by you know working within relationships they begin to learn new skills so you you, you fell in love with your wife you married her you instantly began to learn new skills through the relationship you that was entrusted upon you through that contract of marriage and you yes. continue to do so and now your children are teaching you things so yeah men do reflect mm -hmm. um they just do it through slightly different lens and let yeah. them do it through a slightly different lens. I don't imagine that I could do it. I could reflect on my life through your lens. I don't see that happening. I yeah. didn't see that happening with my husband. I just didn't see things the way he did. Yeah. At all. Ever. Yeah. Right. The day of, um, the day, uh, 9-11. He went out fishing. Okay. I say he only cried. Yeah. W why? Because why? he's unfeeling? No, because he couldn't deal with the emotion. Mm -hmm. And he needed to do something. He needed to go out and do something to prove that yeah. he was still alive. And I needed to feel it and be scared. Yeah. And in the end, I needed him to come home to say everything was okay so that I could make amends and go to the next day. Now, he didn't understand that. And how was he supposed to understand that? I didn't understand. <laughs> and this is how, you know, these are, these are things that happen in relationships with men and women, even with friends, even with friends. 
This is how friends break up relationships and men and women break up relationships because there are particular needs and personal needs and um, unique needs. Mm -hmm. And we all have them, all of us. Yeah, I agree. All right. We can um, slice this orange until it's so thin that we've got juice. Yes. Thanks so much for coming on. Yes, I enjoyed the conversation. I really enjoyed it. Thank you. And until next time, that's a wrap. Yeah.